thinking tree with toppers this is a new series of ecohondics that we have started so that students can gain a better perspective by talking to toppers toppers who have qualified in various examinations and who can really help you out with the tips and tricks and tactics and uh, you know easy ways to get around difficult topics so our guest for today is uh, radhika agrawal um she has qualified the gate examination and gotten herself into the prestigious iit for her phd and uh, radhika is an engineer she is an electronics and uh, communication engineer and she has directly gotten into the phd program uh, of iit by clearing gate and that is why radhika my first question to you is that uh, this is a huge misconception that people have that you have to do masters before you can do phd but it is evident in your case that you uh, did your graduation and then directly by clearing gate examination you were able to get into iit for phd so how did that happen we most of us think that we cannot directly get into research program we have to go through the masters and if you are already intended to do some research then why to waste your time for a masters program and you can directly get into the research program and have enough time of 5 7 years to do at your own pace whatever you like to do and whatever you like to read so it's a great opportunity if you can skip the masters and directly get into phd okay so i understand that uh, when it comes to the entrance programs that that uh, provide you a chance to provide you with a chance to do phd when it comes to the entrance exams of uh, these uh, of these courses i think the, the questions that are asked are of masters level right for gate uh, right. questions that are that are asked are of masters level so how can a student approach that without doing masters and just having bachelors as their background and particularly in your case you did not have economics uh, as like you did not study economics in your graduation so how do you think it's like a barrier it's a difficult thing to do uh, because the question asked are of masters level. right it might take you some time to reach to the level that what undergraduates do study and what is being taught in the masters program but if you are already capable and you are already having enough resources then you can already get by yourself into the program and what it requires is a proper guidance and through egoholics i got the same thing uh, professors were teaching for the masters people also and for those who have done their undergraduate also so there was not an issue of why i haven't get enrolled into the masters program and being from non economics background it did take me some more time to catch up with the people i'll have to start with the scratch and everything but it was quite a flowy process nothing was like that i got obstructed with something just you have to put some extra efforts and you will be all fine Okay, Radhika. So, how was your experience of qualifying gate? Like, how was your study routine like? And what are like the tips and tricks that you would like to share with somebody who's preparing for gate themselves? Okay, so my journey was full of ups and downs, and uh, since uh, I w- I'm an engineer, and for all of us, gate is such a big exam. People put like two, three years to prepare and crack. So uh, one night I was uh, just having a talk with my friend Anand, and he told me that the gate is going to be conducted in humanities also. And so I was, uh, I got just very excited that okay, I can also give gate in something of my interest. and then i tried to explore the various resources and then i came up with the course with ecoholics i joined the course and uh, everything was so precise i didn't have to like rush for the topics to go to different books or to google everything was available at one place and i just have to be very consistent with my routine uh, sometimes it did take like 8 to 10 hours or 6 to 7 hours but you have to maintain your consistency and uh, what most important is the passion you have for the subject and what you want to follow so it did take so much time so much patience but if you are consistent everything is possible on this note i would really like to compliment you on the courage that you have shown radhika because uh, coming from an engineering background and choosing economics and directly going for phd is a really brave decision and not a lot of people are capable of making it so what 
uh, how did you get interested into economics because that is not something that you come across during your four years of engineering of course so what made you right. take interest in economics and why not some other subject or why not give get like engineers do it why did you want to switch your field to humanities okay so during my final year i started reading uh, the business newspaper so that what uh, made me interested into the subject since the terms were very new to me so i go through different books i went to the google to search for the different terms and then i i got so familiarized with what is going into our country and what is going to the current situation so i was able to relate the things and i got uh, more curious that what i uh, what more options are available since economics is such a wide subject that it's never ending you can go for international economics you can go for microeconomics macroeconomics so getting to learn so many things was so exciting and every day i was getting to know the new terms so it made me more curious so i thought that uh, why should i not i got give a shot to something like this and it did give me a great opportunity for phd at iit this also brings a new question uh, in my mind uh, there's a there's a you know noticeable difference when it comes to engineering when we talk about state engineering colleges and we talk about iits and nits there's a huge level of uh, you know difference between both these uh, types of institutes one are the state engineering colleges and one are the iits but this is when i talk about engineering when i talk about btech when i talk about be what is the difference when it comes to phd like is enrolling into iit for a phd really that big of a difference or does your guide or does your topic make a huge difference okay so what is most fascinating to me is the experience that i'll go i'm going to have uh, because i'll get to work under the best of the guides the people who have gathered so much information traveling india traveling abroad and have gained so much name into the uh, field that they are working and also in iits what we get is the best uh, like one of the best labs are available for us to research and in iits we get to work on a commercial basis like uh, our product would be renowned or i would be having something of my own name and under the guidance of the one of the best uh, professors is what is the most exciting thing to me okay that's really great so i think we should encourage people to try to get into iits for phd uh, that's really great um, uh, radhika and uh, one more question is that of course you said that ecoholics has helped you a lot through your journey of preparing for gate examination i do believe that because i'm a part of this institution but other than that i i do believe that you know a person's own hard work is what matters the most of course a coaching institute or a company whatever they contribute to your journey is of course it's a tangible it's it's substantial uh, contribution that a a coaching institute makes to your journey but of course your own hard work is the one that makes the difference there are many people that who even after doing masters are not able to qualify gate but you did it even when you had you had minimal knowledge of uh, economics what has been your strategy uh, of studying for the gate examination Okay so the first thing that i was stick to was the newspaper i never skipped a newspaper my daily routine was like starting with the newspaper so a newspaper is like a uh, you're reading a daily book so never ever skip a newspaper and then i followed the books that have been recommended to me uh for microeconomics and macroeconomics the standard books only i followed but what i did was the uh, i studied with the logic not to just to uh, memorize the thing was a one thing but if you are getting the logic is all you need for the one time and keep revising the things you will be all good so it did take me a lot of time to i'll have to sit for hours but uh, i was quite excited about the new daily things i am getting to learn and the support i got from my family for my friends i get to discuss with them that i have studied this and they were like really excited okay this is a new term we got to know this 
and uh, since uh, in engineering we study a lot of math so with my friends i used to solve the questions that i am having the problem over here so uh, i must uh, say that most of the people may face problem in mathematics but if you discuss with your friends and if you are thorough with the logics it is very easy if you are able to be consistent and you follow the daily routine so basically i am a night owl i used to study sitting uh, nights so for me following the morning routine was always the, <laughs> it's a big uh, you know i never was able to get up early in the morning so all night i used to study so that was the best time for me uh, in all silence i i used to study so people can have their uh, own time table or schedules even in ecoholic sanat sir used to take class in the morning and i never attended the live lecture what i used to it was very flexible i can watch the lecture in the evening or in the night so it's up to us uh, everybody has their own capabilities so what it requires is to stick to your routine stick to the books you follow don't rush to the different resources that i can read from Well, or I can read from different different books. Stick to the one thing, and you will be fine. So uh, this is like a lot of people will uh, relate with you when it comes to the ni- night out thing, and not a lot of people are a fan of uh, the early morning. Uh, but anyway, you mentioned that you had read the newspaper thoroughly, and you had you know religiously practiced newspaper reading habit, and that is what it helped you in the examination. There's also when it comes to you know books a lot of people as you mentioned a lot of people go after uh, studying multiple resources for the same subject and they end up confusing themselves so what are some of the basic books that you stuck to uh, while your preparation for gate okay so for microeconomics i followed this hal varian where we are having very thoroughly discussed topics over there and for macroeconomics uh, i used froyan and for indian economy since uh, it is very vast and never ending subject i just followed the what asa vari ma'am used to taught to us so uh, i won't recommend any book for indian economy because if you are reading newspapers and you are following following some of the resources it is all fine so these are the basic books for mathematics i can uh, i used to refer to chiang and these are the very basic books if you are able to uh, stick to them it is you can do very good and i remember uh, getting enrolled into the test series by ecoholics and i got the very same question in my examination and i was so excited that okay i know this question and this is uh, this is for sure i'm going to do right so if you are uh, solving very uh, so many questions and if you are revising your concepts uh, this is what it is required okay that's uh, of course studying and everything is important before an examination one very important thing that people have to keep in mind is what is called as exam temperament you might be very well prepared for examination and then you go into the examination hall and you lose it all because you are under so much pressure to qualify that uh, exam what did you do to keep yourself calm and how did you build that exam temperament because i'm sure you must have faced that kind of a pressure this was the first time that it was happening you being from a non economics background attempting it and then qualifying it it has got to do a lot with the exam temperament so how did you keep yourself calm and how did everything work out for you okay so i always have this habit of a uh, habit of getting anxious before the exams and uh, before even a month i used to get very anxious and taking so much stress over small things but uh, i would say that if you are getting enrolled yourself to a test series and sitting in the environment that is uh, match, uh, suitable for the test environment so you will be able to eventually get to the thing Uh, on your exam day so what uh, according to my experience on the exam day i was anxious but i was more excited that what are the questions going to be if they are going to be what i have studied or if something new then i was ready for that also that uh, what it requires is the logic only so if you are ready so what makes you ready is to test yourself if you are regularly testing your concepts your learnings and what you are thorough of that is all is required for the exam day okay 
So that was a lot of uh, tricks that you have given to our audience. Now let's go through the questions that are coming. The first of them, the first one that I can see is, "Ma'am, my economics is very low. Any solution? What would you suggest, Radhika?" Okay, so if you love economics, then if you will be giving so much time to economics that eventually it will get into your head. So just stick to the whatever the notes you are having, what your teachers have been taught to you, and what are the resources that are available. And if you are following Hal Varian, then I'll say it would be the best thing you will be having in your hand. So just stick to it and practice. If you are not getting it in four hours, then just give six hours. You will be at the end very good. Okay, other are a lot of congratulations for you for qualifying uh, the gate examination, and um, yeah, I'm just going through them. There are a lot of questions, but people are asking books of taxation. I'm not sure if Radhika would be the right person for that. But um, okay, I haven't followed any book for taxation, but uh, I was having the notes from Ecoholics. Uh, those were very precise, so I just uh, used to revise them regularly, and it was all fine. There's a question about Radhika. Please tell us about public policy. I, can you like uh, specify the question? Tell us about public policy. What? Okay, there's also one question. Uh, I'm also non-economics background, pursuing MA economics, looking to qualify gate. What do you suggest for this person? Okay, so if you are from non-economics background, then you'll have to start from the scratch. Started uh, started with I started with the uh, economics of eleven, twelve standard. Then, uh, as I said, I used to follow newspaper very thoroughly, and uh, Then I jumped to the undergraduate books. What have been taught and what have been recommended for these? Uh, I have already told the books for the undergraduate. So if you are able to follow up with these, then it's okay. It doesn't matter you are from economics background or non-economics background because at the end you'll have to put your own efforts. So doesn't matter. Apart from the questions that we are getting for the uh, from the audience, Radhika, I have one question for you, and I'm sure a lot of people will relate uh, relate to this. You study, you study, you study, and then eventually, when you start to write a test, you realize that you've forgotten most of what you had studied. Exactly. Does that happen with you? That happens with a lot of people. How do you count uh, that? I get very anxious <laughs> that uh, if I'm not able to. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very demotivating. It's very demotivating that you you have studied a concept for such a long time, and then when you sit to write a test, you can hardly remember any of it, and that is very difficult because you are in the exam center. You're looking to qualify for the examination. You have worked a lot for it, and then you cannot remember the concept. So how do you get through that? Okay, so I have a habit of note making. I used to write everything, whatever new I find, uh, just to put it into my head. I used to write a lot. So initially, you will be writing long, long notes and uh, very long passages. But eventually, you will be able to get into the very short terms and very precise notes. So uh, it will take so much time in the beginning, in the very nascent stage. But eventually, you will be able to put your things into one word, one sentences, and at the exam day, you will be all confident with those terms. Okay. We also have one question from the audience: How to prepare for the interview? What were the preparations that you have done? Okay, so these were the very first interviews of my lifetime. That's going to be very big, and I was very anxious at how I'm going to face such great minds. so uh, preparation was all that i was confident with what all knowledge i was having so i'll tell you my experience of iit delhi so it was a two stage process for the interview uh, for the first stage they provided me with uh, some of the material and it was the or- oral examination sort of on the, uh, on that material and the very next day i was uh, going to have the personal in- interaction with the panelists so what they basically was checking uh, was the my knowledge of the subject and 
uh, the very first thing they asked me was my intellectual frame like how i got uh, into this domain and what i am intending to contribute uh, during my five year uh, uh, journey so i was uh, uh, in the april and may we got to know about these uh, startups that they are coming for the ipo so i was very excited to know that how they get funded and what is the journey that uh, any startup is following because from iit delhi we listen that uh, so many startups are coming up from a very nascent stage and uh, to a stage of that they are going for an ipo so i was very excited to know the journey and what could be improved for them so this is was uh, this was the my basic uh, starting point and then i read about it so there i developed my framework for the uh, this pro, uh, this topic and this is what they basically discussed me about so if you know what is your interest in so just read 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 about it and uh, you will be having enough knowledge to discuss to share your thoughts and what you are intending to do okay so they look for if you have the zeal to do something better and if you have ideas for it that's like one of the factors that decides whether you're going to qualify the interview or not of course confidence plays a very big role in that and confidence comes when you have extensively read about something so that is right. a very good uh, tip for the candidates of gate examination also a person is asking do you have any book suggestions for statistics okay so statistics uh, i didn't follow any of the books so concepts were very basic that we studied during our school or uh, college days so nothing much was required for the statistics part if you are good with your calculations and you just have to memorize some of the formulas and that is all is required for the statistics okay the next question is how you revised subjective subjects okay so there is a very basic um, misconception that we have in our mind that theoretical subjects are very hard to grasp but uh, theoretical subjects are equally logical as we do our practical subjects so if you are getting to know what is the basic logic behind the theory you you won't be have to like uh, just uh, revising 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 you will be reading three four times and uh, that it is what uh, is enough for you so for the theoretical subject is uh, the most of the reading is required and if you are not getting uh, with that also you can write up the things in your notebooks when you write it will directly get into your mind so that is all this is a question that has come up a lot in our uh, conversation uh, how much time do you have to give to economics uh, in a day how much study time do you have to a lot to economics in one day shubham is asking this question although he has written something else but i'm rephrasing it so how much time do you need to give uh, to economics in a day okay so if you are starting from the scratch then uh, in a day you will have to give 6 to 7 hours for economics and eventually when you will get the logic you will get the concept you will be all good in 2 3 hours so if you are consistent with the uh, learnings and the logics so that is all uh, but initially you will have to give so much time and you will because the concept would be very new and uh, but it is very relatable that if you relate to your daily life then the concepts are going to be very relatable and it is going to be easy as you will go through the process okay uh, the next question is did they ask much questions on your research proposal or were they focusing on your subject knowledge mostly during your interview okay so it depends basically on the panelists what they are trying to look into you but uh, from my uh, iit delhi interview experience it was that they were asking me that what i am going to work upon so basically you can say it was from my research proposal only that uh, what i was intending to do and what more i would like to uh, dig up into the topic so it was more from the research proposal only okay so people when they prepare for competitive examinations it is not only focused on one exam it is uh, the people prepare for multiple examinations at the same time right yeah. uh, to increase the chances into getting one of them 
so when you have so many exams in front of you how do you judge the level of an examination like how would you how would you judge like how difficult gate is going to be how much time do i need to invest in that how many sources do i need to refer for that i can very easily say that indian economic services is more difficult in comparison to ugc net examination so how did you judge uh, the level of gate exam and how much did you have to study for it and where would you place it in the hierarchy of uh, competitive examinations of economics okay so for me what i experience is that that as many choices you have that uh, that much confused you are so keep as low choices you are having in hand so if i go with the gate then uh, gate is very easy in comparison to the indian economic services because they they are asking the subjective questions also and the course is very wide so gate is much more easier than indian economic service examination and also for rbi grade b i would say that uh, gate is easier than that and also gate is having so many things uh, in one examination that you'll have to prepare for aptitude you'll have to prepare for english and uh, other nine subjects of economics only so gate would uh, require most of and since you are targeting any competitive exams so just stick to one of the op- option and prepare for that thoroughly and if you are not getting into that then you might look to other options Uh, because you are always having your invest into something and knowledge never gets wasted so if you are prepared for gate then you will it would be like that you have already 50% prepared for any other examination so it is like this thank you so much for being with us radhika today we have a lot of questions coming in from the audience right now also but we are running short of time and we have to let radhika go as of now uh, thank you so much for being with us today radhika i'm sure your session has hugely helped the students and using your tips uh, i hope a lot of them qualify the exam the next year and uh, do you have any final words for us uh so all the very best to those who are preparing for the examination and be consistent be passionate about your learnings and gain as much knowledge as you can because it will eventually going to increase your confidence in you and uh, this is what you should follow by heart and thank you ecoholics for uh, supporting throughout my journey and providing me this platform to share my story and all the very best to everybody Thank you so much, Radhika, for being with us today. Uh, thank you for giving us your time. Thank you for guiding our students uh, for the journey that is uh, laying ahead of them. And uh, thank you just for being with us here today. We'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you all of you for being with us. And uh, we will see you with the next topper in the next video of Thinking Tree with Toppers.